Hello and welcome to another video. So I thought while I'm waiting for some more parts to print out, I thought I would do a video on why I think the exoskeletons and power armour in general is inevitable in the future. So number one, starting with the obvious one, and that is armour and weight in general. So soldiers are of course having to carry more weight than ever, which is of course ever increasing the amount of stress that's actually put onto their skeleton, onto their muscular system and everything else. Now, as this weight increases, as we need to put more armor on soldiers to basically cover them from things like FPV drone strikes, or at least the smaller ones, then this is just going to get out of hand completely where the soldier's body physically can't cope. And even if you just try to neglect this fact while they were in the military, they're just going to have a lot of medical problems after the military that the military is going to be liable for, or at least the government and state is going to be liable for. So just from an economic point of view, it doesn't actually make sense to just keep putting this weight onto the soldiers and expecting their bodies to deal with it. No matter how many times they say your injury is not service related. A reason why this problem is going to get worse is weapons themselves, as a lot of militaries are trying to kind of look for the new caliber of cartridge that is going to be more lethal. Not only are you going to have to have better body armor, but you're also going to probably have a heavier weapon system like the XM7 and have to carry more ammunition while the ammunition is now larger and heavier. Which is of course the reason why we moved away from 762 by 51 in the first place and stayed on 556. So as far as I can tell there is going to be a high likelihood that a lot more heavier weapons are going to have to be used, which is where using exoskeletons and a form of exosuit, power armor, whatever you want to call it, will massively increase the usability of those systems. Which brings me neatly on to number two and that is technology in general. So to tie it in with the weapons thing, I do feel like we're kind of getting to the end of what's capable with the type of weapons we're using, as in regular rifles. I feel like at least when I research it, when I'm seeing all of the different calibers that militaries are basically looking into, uh, 6.8 or 6.5 or whatever it is, it's all kind of trying to rehash the same thing and just trying to improve it and trying to make it the new thing. But when I look back in history, and see the change from different type of rifles and muskets before that, I do feel like we're on the edge of a new form of technology in that regard that's gonna come out and basically replace the rifles that we've currently got. What form of technology is gonna replace that? I don't particularly know, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be something to do with electronics that probably has some form of digital tagging. With how cheap a lot of electronics can be made, and when you look at the price of some ammunition, I do feel like the electronics are starting to actually get close in cost to some of the ammunition prices. Particularly if you can have this guided munition that basically nearly guarantees one shot, one kill, versus having to lay 30 rounds of something else down. Now having this type of technology just purely handheld brings up issues in my mind, particularly with things like batteries. So if everything is just a handheld device, it needs its own separate battery and separate system. Whereas if you have exosuits and exoskeletons, you can basically integrate all of that into the exoskeleton itself. You can use the power supply off the exoskeleton. You can even use some processing power off the exoskeleton. That could actually allow these weapons technologies to basically to be cheaper to produce and design and build and crucially have different modifications of. For example, some of the fantastic technology that is in new scopes could just be integrated directly into a mixed reality helmet that links to whatever sighting system on the weapon that is now newly made. You could also, for example, have drones and missiles launched from the backpack of the exoskeleton, all again integrated with the rest of the suit, thereby not needing the complicated systems that are, for example, on javelins. I also see exoskeletons, power armor, exosuits as basically a way to keep up with robots. Unfortunately, a war isn't a war unless people are involved. That's just kind of how it is. Any sort of just pure drone warfare isn't really a war, it's just kind of skirmishing with other people's equipment and destroying each other's property. So unfortunately, humans are always going to have to be involved and one way for them to be involved with as much safety as possible is basically for them to have them sewered up. Such exosuits will also allow the operators to basically keep up with the rest of the robots, not just physically, but actually networking with information. When you look at all of the technology that is available in the F-35 and how that pilot can easily stream that data wherever it's needed to go and can basically be a networking element, that is something that's missing on the ground, whereas a suit of power armour could basically be an F-35 on the ground. Which leads to reason number four, which kind of seems like a reason not to have exoskeletons, but I actually think it's a reason why there will be exoskeletons, and that is power supply. 
So not only can exoskeletons already have a power supply to run smaller things off of like night vision and other forms of communications, while also having space in the back in my case to basically have much more high-end processes, that can also be protected from the weather and other things. These pluses of course seem to be made irrelevant with the fact that you'll actually have to charge the batteries up on the exosuit itself. However, I see this as a problem that is going to get resolved regardless of whether exoskeletons exist or not. The more drones that get involved, the more form of robotics, whether that's robot dogs or some form of bipedal Tesla robot, the more charging capability is going to be required regardless. We're also seeing more implements of vehicles that are basically hybrid, so, so they'll have a diesel engine but also batteries for silent running and to allow them to not burn a lot of fuel while they're basically ticking over. But all of these things mean there's a lot more power being generated for these vehicles. There's a lot more power needing to be generated for systems on these vehicles, which means you're only asking to basically increase the amount of power they're supplying. It's not like you're having to start from scratch and make separate power supply producers to charge exoskeletons with. It's just an addition. It's not starting from scratch. That thereby reduces a massive downside of exoskeletons in general. That being that you're always, always going to have a concern about range and endurance. I don't see a technology on the horizon that's going to be mass produced that's actually going to solve that issue, but it kind of becomes solved if you have a really good power generation supply chain. For example, tanks don't do very good on MPG and neither do trucks. This was worse in World War II, they did even less MPG, a lot of them were petrol, some were diesel, but once all of that supply chain was set up, it didn't matter so much. There is also a point where if you are charging bigger things like vehicles, if you need these other power generation systems to power bigger electrical pieces of machinery, then actually charging exoskeletons isn't that much draw and current. It will all seem small fry compared to some form of EV vehicle. And the fourth reason brings me away from the military side and onto other industries such as medical. Now, as this technology gets more readily available, I can't see why they basically can't replace wheelchairs, at least for a lot of people with disabilities. There's already been some fantastic work by people making exoskeletons that basically automatically fit round the user. Furthermore, with advances like Neuralink, even if they do manage to put microcontrollers in each muscle group to allow someone to walk again who's got spinal cord damage, There'll certainly be a period where they'll basically need some form of help as their muscular system won't work correctly until they've had proper physio. Which is an area where I think exoskeletons would work extremely well in as they could supply support and stability for the person to allow them to basically rebuild all of that leg muscle and get their own stability back through physio. Even if that is able to be done without physio, they could certainly speed up the process. There are also some positions in industry where exoskeletons would work well in. Although personally, I do think they are a little bit limited. That's because naturally exoskeletons are going to add a degree of bulk, which will limit where you can actually use them for. So any place that is particularly tight in manoeuvring, I think an exoskeleton could be a bigger problem than a plus. But if the work area isn't tight, there could certainly be a plus in helping you hold and lift things. In particular to me, it's actually being able to just hold many different things at once. As you work in industry, you always end up thinking I could do with an extra pair of hands here and an exoskeleton could literally provide that. Some perhaps out of the box things could be, for example, for a welder who needs two pieces of material to be held together in a certain position. Instead of using other clamps, the exoskeleton could have another set of arms to essentially hold these together. It's actually these kind of out of the box situations where I think they could be used more in than just try to give the operators essentially more strength and endurance. There's many tasks in industrial jobs that are basically tasks where you can struggle like hell to do it yourself or you can have someone else help you and do it easily. However, having someone else adds, adds to cost. So if there was a way to basically make it easier for you to do the task on your own so it was just as easy as doing it with two people but only doing it with one, that is certainly a plus and a plus that exoskeletons could provide. Which about brings me to the end of this little video. In one of the next videos over the coming weeks, I'll be starting to build on the next exoskeleton for the new prototype of that prototype behind me. Starting off with the back section, as well as continuing with the development of my own actuators and the start of my own motor controller build. So if you like the video and want to see more, please feel free to like and subscribe. And thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.